All right, this is the SRI model 8610C GC. The, the model number really just refers to the size of the box. If you had a, a model 310, like this GC over here, it's really all the same, just the, the model number really refers to the size of the box that all the parts are mounted in. So this video really relates to any of the SRI products because they're all really the same and they all are extremely customizable because we make 16 detectors and 12 injectors and we fit any combination of those into one size box or the other. The 8610C is the most common box. It has a, a sizable column oven. It has room for a valve and valve oven, a pre-concentrator if necessary, and up to six detectors mounted on the right hand side. So the way the SRI system works is that all the controls for the GC are um, these little buttons here. That you can see that there's a series of three buttons on the front panel of the GC. Sometimes there's only two, but there's all kinds of buttons and most of the time they're adjusted with the screwdriver which comes with the SRI GC. It mounts here in a little holster on the right hand side. So, for instance, if you wanted to change the pressure of one of the gases, this particular GC has a, a carrier gas, a hydrogen gas, and an air. So, the air, the, the top button, the top button shows you what you're setting the, the air to. In this case, it's 5 psi. So, when I push the top button, it shows 5 psi here on this display. If I push the bottom button, it also shows 5 psi. Well, what that is, this is the actual. This is the set point, what we want it to be, and this is the actual. So, if I wanted to change the actual, I would take my SRI screwdriver and insert it into the, into the hole above the column of buttons that control the air pressure, and then I would turn the air pressure from 5, perhaps down to, to 3 or to 4. So, you, you engage the screw, and then turn the pressure down or up to whatever you like. And then the actual should equal whatever the set point is. So that's how it is with all the buttons. The, the top button is the set point. The bottom button is what it really is. If there's no gas connected, then the actual might be zero, even though the actual is set to 20 psi. So the front panel is organized by all the gases are in this section here, so it, we can have up to seven different gases controlled by the screwdriver adjustment to whatever pressure you'd like. And then we have a section here that's called detector parameters, and depending on which detectors you have, there may be buttons if that detector is installed, or there may not be. If, if there's no detector installed, then you won't have these, these buttons. This particular GC is equipped with an FID detector and an electron capture detector, so these two buttons control the igniter voltage for the FID detector. These three buttons control the, the current for the electron capture detector. So we make 16 kinds of detectors, so there'll always be some kind of detector parameter control in this area. And you can read the detailed instructions about the detector to figure out what they are, but the, the principle stays constant. The top button is what you want it to be, the bottom button is what it is at that moment. And then we have the, the heaters. We can have up to 16 different heaters on a GC depending on how the GC is configured. So this particular GC has a column oven, it has an FID, an ECD, a valve, and a pre-concentrator. So each one of those things has some kind of a heater control associated with it. So for instance, the valve temperature, if I push the top button, it tells me what the set point is, in this case 60 degrees centigrade. If I push the bottom button, it shows me what the actual is, in this case 25 degrees centigrade. So, it's in the process of heating up. It's not really at its set point. But that's how you know when things are working correctly. For instance, look at the trap temperature. The trap temperature, you see this LED is flickering. Well, the flickering happens because the set point is equal to the, um, the actual. The, the set point is 35, the actual is 35 also, and that's why the, the LED is flickering. The heaters, the, the LEDs flicker when they're close 
to having the actual equal the set point. When they're heating full blast, like this one is, the LED comes on full blast. When they're at their temperature, the LED flickers to maintain the temperature. And then when they're over the temperature, the LED turns off. So this GC has a detector temperature associated with the FID detector. It's in the position 2. And so it says po detector position 2. And so the actual temperature is 300. I'm sorry, the um, set point temperature is 300. The actual temperature is 229. So it's not quite at the, the set point temperature yet, but it will be as soon as it heats up. And then the electron capture detector, the set point temperature is 252. The actual temperature is 110. So it's also in the process of heating up. The column oven here, where the column lives, is the actual temperature, the set point temperature is 100. The actual temperature is 62. So it's also in the process of heating up. This last button here that's labeled oven maximum or oven max is a, a, a safety feature. It, you set this temperature with your screwdriver, so you, you engage the screwdriver, and if you have a column in your column oven that has a maximum safe temperature of 250, for instance, then you might set the column, the oven max at 255. That way, if you make a mistake or somebody new comes along and enters some parameter to control this and raises the temperature beyond the safe limit, then there will be an alarm that sounds, and that's this, this red light here down in the bottom left, which is called the thermocouple out of range alarm. So if you try to heat the oven above the oven max, then this red light comes on and it turns off all the heaters, so all the heaters stop heating. So also there's a, a, a switch here below the, the display meter. So when you flip the switch up, it allows you to read whatever button you depress. If you flip the switch down, it only reads constantly the column oven temperature. And that's because most of the time, that's the thing that's changing during the analysis is the column oven temperature. So that's something that you'd like to be able to, to see at a glance. But if you want to read, for instance, the ECD detector temperature, then you have to flip the switch up and then push the button that says ECD cell temperature. So also on the front panel there's a, a ready light. Now the ready light lights up once everything is, is equilibrated. Now you don't have to wait to start the analysis. You can start the analysis by pushing the start button anytime whether the light is lit or not. But when the light is lit it means that the oven is at the set point temperature and has been for a minute without having any kind of excursion beyond one degree from the set point temperature. So uh, ready light if the light is lit, but you can start to run by pushing the button even if it's not lit. So going back to the left hand side of the front of the GC, we see that we have something called a carrier filter bakeout. So the carrier filter bakeout is um, something that we have built into the GC that um, heats up a little filter. The filter is actually located right here where my finger is and it's um, a little tiny tube. It's a three inch long tube filled with molecular sieve and it's encased in a heater jacket. So if you want to bake that filter out, you can flip this switch up. So when I flip the switch up, it's a spring-loaded switch, so when I flip it up, the light lights and it'll stay lit for five minutes while it heats that filter up. So the carrier gas goes through that hot filter and pushes the contaminants out onto the column. We have another video that describes this in a little more detail, but that's what this means, is the carrier filter bake out. You really only need to use it if you think that you have some problem with your carrier gas and it helps you diagnose that. This switch here turns on the built-in air compressor. Now, not all of our GCs have a built-in air compressor. It's an option, but many of them have this, so this provides air to the flame ionization detector or some other detectors that also use air and you can't hear the air compressor running, but this turns it off or turns it on. If you turn the air compressor off, then the air pressure actual will bleed down to zero because there's no air to supply it. When you turn the air compressor filter, the internal air compressor on, then the pressure goes back up to whatever the set point is. This switch here controls the internal air compressor. Not all GCs are equipped 
with an internal air compressor. It's an option, so you can order it or not. But if you have the built-in air compressor, then there's a switch here, and you can turn the air compressor on and off. If you turn the air compressor off, then naturally the actual air pressure will drop to, to zero. Take a couple of seconds, but when you turn the air compressor off, it'll drop to zero. When you turn the air compressor on, the pressure will rise to whatever you have set at the set point. If you want to adjust the set point, you take the screwdriver, you insert it into the, the little potentiometer, and you turn the pressure up or down to whatever you like. Here I am turning it up to, to 6 psi, and the actual should be within a psi or so of whatever we set. So that's the front panel of the GC. So over here on the right of the GC, is where we mount the detectors. You can have up to six detectors mounted in these positions along the right-hand side of the column oven. Column oven is, is here, and it's a very um, precise temperature-controlled oven that can vary in temperature from ambient temperature to 400 degrees centigrade. Inside of the column oven, there's going to be some kind of a column. It, it may be a, a capillary column like this, or it may be a, a, a packed column that looks that looks more like this. Columns come in all shapes and sizes, and there's enough room in the column oven to put four or sometimes even five different columns. This is the valve oven. Now, some GCs have this valve oven and some don't. It's, it's another option that you order, depending on what it is that you want to measure. But this is a valve that does a gas injection of whatever is in a tube called a loop that's connected to the valve. You can have up to three valves in this valve oven, and the valve oven is something that's also controlled by the front panel temperature controls. This particular GC also has a pre-concentrator, sometimes we call it a trap, but what it is, it's a tube filled with an adsorbent powder and if you pass a volume of gas through the tube, it retains the molecules that you're trying to measure and accumulates them, and then eventually the, the valve rotates and this heats up, and the molecules that are retained on the trap are inserted into the carrier gas and onto the column and then into the detector. So this enables you to get detection limits that are thousands of times less than what the detectors would normally be able to see because you're concentrating the sample on this trap and then desorbing it. In, in the back of the GC there's a little parts box. This um, contains some common replacement parts, extra graphite ferrules, an extra chip. In case the amplifier chip has a problem you can replace it. You have a, a little adapter so that you can make a syringe injection onto your column. There are a variety of septa, replacement septa. These septa last for thousands of injections if you don't over-tighten them, but eventually they need to be replaced. The part number to replace them is right here on the lid. You have some extra nuts and ferrules, and in this case, because the GC has an electron capture detector, there's a little test resistor that enables you to test the electronics of the GC and verify that the electronics are working properly. These are the cool-down fans. The cool-down fans blow cold air into the oven to cool it down when the oven is told to go down in temperature from 200 degrees down to 50 degrees. The, the fans start to blow, and they blow the hot air out of the oven. They actually lift the oven a little bit because of the force of the air. The lid of the, lid, um, the, lid of the oven just lifts a little bit to let the hot air out. So that's about it with the, um, the GC. There's one more thing, and that's that you can hear a little click when the GC lid closes. That's because there's an interlock switch, a safety feature. It's back here, so I can push the interlock switch with my finger, and you can hear a little clunk, and that's a relay inside the GC allowing the heaters to be energized. So all the heaters are turned off when the lid is up, when the lid is down, all the heaters are energized. So thanks for this, and um, Look at some of our other YouTube videos for detailed explanations on some of the other features of the GC.